Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the High Soapbox. And today I am it is a very, very special episode. I am joined by Mr. Tank the Target. Or just Target for short in this instance. He is a he is a Twitch streamer with a growing following, and and I met him as we were just throwing our heads against the wall at bosses in a vet dungeon on Elder Scrolls Online. Specifically, Mars of Sacrifices, which was just interesting but this is a but but this is a very special episode for our audio listeners because good news we have a we are currently streaming this with two targets audience as we speak and for those of you interested in watching uh target play a little eso while we have this podcast they're coming the same day this releases on the on our podcasting platform it's going to be on youtube at our youtube channel keep a lookout for that but then again we're recording this a week later so there's a bit of a time delay so ain't that interesting (laughs) i guess that's what happens when you do things live so we're going to just be treating it as if as opposed to like i said for our audio listeners and our youtube listener uh, listeners and watchers uh we're going to be uh talking deliberately as if we're we're live right now just for just to make it easier on the streamers and that's why we're just i wanted to give a little bit of context beforehand so target how are you doing pretty good and yourself good 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 so we had a little bit of a preliminary discussion beforehand and despite being a quite the dps and tank and eso you started your you started you you're a you're florida born but not necessarily florida raised that where, 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 where did where did so you so where are you um where did you before you came back to florida where are you originally from um depends on how you want to look at it i've lived in nashville tennessee for a good eight nine years and good food good music all around mm-hmm. and then indianapolis indiana for an, another 12 years following that mm. interesting interesting so so if just just to ask again what 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 is your so before you started being a twitch streamer what was your profession i've been a mostly a plumber for the majority of time that from graduating high school till probably about this year done some other construction work in between there as well but Predominantly a plumber and a welder. Did you enjoy it? For the most part. There there are times when, of course, days aren't as as great as you'd like them to be, but they've been pretty decent. And clients clients think they know everything. Well, most of mine would end up being along the lines of industrial and commercial. A few times when I first started off, during high school, it was residential, but leaned more into light commercial following that, and then into commercial and industrial usage. Interesting. Nice. So so what made you start doing the streaming bit of ESO? Um, th- probably three or four different things converging at once. I had been a tank previous in other games and had been doing so for a long time. And in ESO, I found that there were many people who had some things that they wanted to learn but weren't able to figure out how to get that information. Or it wasn't conveyed in a way that was easily accessible for them to actually get a hold of and so i was like all right like i understand game mechanics from a different standpoint than most others because most time you don't have tanks going out and doing something but in understanding that mechanic and how it approaches whether you're healing or whether you're dpsing or whether you're providing support for an entire group what 
are the most important factors based on the rules of the game that you're abiding by. And so my brother had started, had, has been playing since launch and bless his heart. <laughs> and I, I was like, well, let's let me do it for those who have not had a chance to, and then go from there. Um, because I, I haven't played since launch, but I understand where the game is now. Right, right. So, how does ESO tanking, like, obviously it, 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 it is very different in, in a certain, in a lot of ways from something like WoW, but how, like, how, how is ESO tanking different? Like, given all the MMOs you played, like, let's just list those first. What are, let's see MMOs you've played over the course of your life. Mostly Diablo and WoW. For WoW, the reason why I played that the longest time was because I was the I ran my own guild while I was there, and so that took up the majority of my time. And most of the other places didn't support a full role tank that could do alternate things in the process. Um, and so before that, it was Diablo. And I do mean the original Diablo. And then 2, and then I kind of, from 2, slid into WoW as it started off and moved into the Paladin role from Diablo to into the Paladin role in World of War. Even the Warrior was an objectively better tank. <laughs> yes, because I've played in ways that are slightly different than the usual thought process of a tank. And it, must been, it must have been so damn hard for you to get into a raid group. I can only imagine. <laughs> there there were there were times but at the same time I was the type of tank that would go and at that point in time go up to the hinterlands at level 20 and go fight the level 30 or Arethia Highlands the level 30 um mobs and spend 15 20 minutes to kill one and then but the stupid the stupid amount of XP for doing so well, at that point in time, when things were still active, it was there's only two classes that can kill anything, and if they can't kill it, it can't be killed, and that was an Affliction Warlock or a Prop Paladin. And so I was the Prop Paladin, and I knew how to work my abilities to my benefit to stay alive, and I did a very good job of that. Um, doesn't mean I didn't have other classes, but that was the majority of the roles that I played even when I had other classes afterwards. Um, that includes my Death Knight over there, and, um, in essence, in weird ways, my Disciplined Priest. So, that's kind of where my start was and where I lean to, yes, most people did take just warriors to things, and my a lot of those guilds are not completely still there anymore, which is sad to sad to hear. Uh, the one I started is actually still up and running with some of the original, well, not the original original members, but some of the first members that I got. What, what happened to you as what happened to you as being guild leader? Did you just pass it on to somebody with more time? I did pass it on to somebody with more time. Um, Rueth, who happens to be to was the queen of the guild at that point in time. Um, she's taken oh, over Lord. and been running since then. Bless her heart. You think? Do you think you, if you ever decided to go back, you might have a place as like an officer or something? Um. Even did though, burn, or did you burn that bridge? No, I did not burn that bridge. the The statement was, if I wanted to come back and take over, take back the 
my guild that I could. I said, no, like I've passed it on to somebody else to, to work with. She's learned enough from the various experiences that occurred from like understanding how new players come in, how new people, new people come in who have our experienced players, what they're looking for, what they may not be looking for. Uh, she leaned it, she leans more towards the running the market end of stuff in the auction house and being the guild drowning in gold. Yes. And I like I do not I didn't mind that at all. There were a few times we controlled the prices in the auction house on our server. What was your guild's name? Horde's Nightmare. Oh, so you were oh, so you were an alliance side. I was alliance side. Got it, got it, got it. Because a lot of my friends play a lot of most of the people I know who play WoW, who've been playing WoW for years and years and years, play mm-hmm. Horde. They do, and that was probably one of the funniest things when I went to a GameStop at a midnight midnight launch and was standing in line, and most everybody was looking at me and were like. You play Alliance, but you're not a 12 year old. I was like, no, that, that's why I'm actually your nightmare. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. oh, boy. But, um, just to bring things to a, a more serious side for a moment, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts about, um, blizzard recently you know uh, referring to oh yes i do and i uh, before before you continue shameless plug just so everybody uh listening on stream listening on the pot watching on stream listening on the podcast or watching on youtube if you are just as disgusted as we are with blizzard's behavior in bending to a to a authoritarian regime if you go to highmediamarketplace.com slash collections slash trollolo slash products slash cbt or go or check the link in the description of the of the podcast in the youtube video you will be able to get by yourself your very own kami blizzard tea which features the blizzard entertainment logo surrounded by the iconic four stars of a of a, of a kami flag wear it to blizzcon and show and show exactly what you think about them de- degradating free speech i apologize for the shameless plug Target, please continue. I, I, and I will send and I will send you a link to that so you can giggle at it too. No, that's fine. My thought is that the issue is a lot more nuanced than my consideration had originally led me to think. And like, definitely. Don't definitely. Don't, don't don't get me wrong. Like, I still am not the fan of the situation and how it unfolds i mean the, yeah, china, china has six times the amount of active gamers in their population than we do they have 600 oh yeah that, versus america is 100 that wasn't my that's not the reason why i say that um one of the things that was brought up by Bel Air gaming was something that i had not considered and i went that does actually cause me to go how do you actually handle it when you're this far in which was we have to remember that blizzard because they are in china do you have chinese employees and so what happens if they decide to allow things that are contradictory to a government that is not a, that does not want dissension to employees that work for a company that allows dissension and that was a thought i had i had not considered and he didn't necessarily spell it out that that way but i was like that's a issue that i had not considered is because now you, as if you are leading your company, you're responsible for the people that you have, even if they're in another country. Right. 
Um, and as running a guild before, there was a point in time where I could actually say that the sun never set on the Horde's Nightmare Empire. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea that I personally believe that Spider-Man's uh, Uncle Ben's statement is the most misquoted statement, even though it is the correct, it is quoted correctly, it is the mis- most misspoken statement. It is not with great power comes great responsibility. It is with great responsibility that great power comes. And mm-hmm. to jokingly reference it, it is the one thing that we actually talk about the most about Spider-Man. And it is his response ability due to his spider senses tingling that gives him his greatest power. Mm -hmm. He is able to respond to things because he has the ability to respond to them. And in the case of Active Blizz, um, and I say that because most of the original Blizzard employees that were there are no longer there, um, Activision's portion of it looks at things and considers we, we have an obligation to our shareholders. The shareholders... Unfortunately, the greatest majority of them are not the gamers. We may be stakeholders, but we are not shareholders. And according to U.S. law, they are responsible to the shareholders for ensuring that they increase market and market value. If they do not, they can legally be ripped of their company by the shareholders. So if the shareholders say that they must go do work in China, they must go do work in China. If the But that means the major that would mean a larger majority a larger a majority of shareholders larger than the controlling like than the people who control like the people who control the company in terms of like working their day to day what that means enough shareholders who collectively hold m- more power like more more a higher percentage than the people with who are working at the company would have to dictate that you know so if only 30 mm-hmm. percent of the people of the of, of shares in it are like it's part of the reason why co- multi-million dollar companies and stuff buy back shares they yeah. take their profits on and, and do buybacks. It's because when they do those buybacks, they are able to not be so like they're not basically enslaved to shareholders. It's like I don't give like certain companies I think are awful and just are just scummy, but mm. others I under like I understand they have to do what they do, even though they know it's hurting them long term. The gaming is a prime example of that. Shareholders don't give a shit about how how consumers view games and shit and how and if they want to buy or not they just care that they, they make money and outside of that they don't care about the repercussions they 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 do care about the repercussions but, right, but it right. is it's a cost versus um gain benefits gain would be would be one but cost versus benefits And the idea is we can say that we're their market. And we are. We are their market. The idea is, though, that in China, there are more millionaires being made on a daily basis than there is in the U.S. or the rest of the world. Yeah. Like this, these are these are actual facts. As somebody who says, okay, yes, I do believe in the facts. I do believe in the understanding of it. 
the idea becomes, all right, the fact is that they have a market. And then, like, this is where, like, even my play in Diablo comes in, that they want to move into the mobile gaming market because that's where it is in that country. That is the largest portion of where they can draw the biggest amount of money. Um, everybody may not have access to a computer, but they do have access to a cell phone. Now, do I... As the, as the meme said, do you all not have phones? Um, the idea, as beneficial as it is, may also come to bite them in the rear because China is also enacting the fact that any new phones that are purchased that are smartphones have to actually have a picture with facial recognition and everything else so they can socially score their people based on their usage of their phone. And so that becomes something that is of consideration when you're going, well, we want to move into the mobile market. But when your mobile market is now the tracking device of whether people speak freely on something or, or don't, yeah, becomes a very becomes a very big issue. But on the as we say that about China, then we have to look at the EU for the same issue. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, Britain has thrown no, people in prison for things like like the Count Dankula is like a, is considered a martyr for free speech. Not not just not just Britain. When I say EU, the I do mean the, yeah, the yeah, EU because they just had a court ruling that said that all social media is if any country in the EU says that what's being posted online is not truthful, that they have to remove it from the social platform worldwide. That's from the highest court in the EU. There's no place else to appeal it to. That just happened either last week, I think is what it is. I thought I could have sworn that happened like a few, like a month ago. It was it went to court probably about a month ago, but they handed down the verdict, and the verdict that's the conditions of the verdict as well is the fact that they have to remove it worldwide, like it can't be anywhere in the world. So that does affect Facebook that affects Twitter, that affects um, <laughs> uh, uh, what is it? Not, uh, MySpace, for those who may even still use it, uh, Instagram, um, any of the social platforms. And the reason why that is something that some have gone, well, that's issue because um which country is it um one of the countries that does that is not part of the eu but a lot of people from the european union go there um does that in their country as they go well this is this isn't truth and so there's no way to say that it isn't is or isn't or that it is that it is isn't true and so they black it out in that country and you can understand like if it's inside their borders but then that means that if the if someone I was going to say they just had a soccer game. The English just went and played soccer somewhere, and they were very appalled at the fact of how that country's stadium treated one of the players and were pretty much like had to eject half the stadium out of the game. Otherwise, the game was going to have to stop. And they were going because they, they came across and did an audible warning to the audience for their 
actions towards the person and by making certain hand gestures and noises and then and like that's recently just happened by the way and then the both teams went back to their locker rooms and if it had continued beyond that the game would have been called and so if that country decided that they were going to say that that's the truth and anybody saying anything differently is incorrect and they want it banned that presents issues worldwide that pre- causes issues even for me here in America. Yeah, it does. And so the idea is we are work- we are operating in a global market. Mm-hmm. No country lives or dies to itself. This is true. So how do we deal with the fact of understanding that there are people that we want to help and protect Mm -hmm. without forcing our values upon that country, but also not having that country force its values upon us? Well, I think... For us, it's relatively easy because, like, we can do it. It's just the people in power just, you know, don't. Well, well, <laughs> and like, the, I, and, but the, like, the, the is, idea is, though, that we're talking about, like, we, we consider ourselves a superpower, which we are. Mm-hmm. Russia is considered a superpower, which they are. Not, eh, it's, they're a regional power. They're not a superpower. They are right. superpowered by the fact of the energy available to them from nuclear weapons. And this is actually, yeah, you're you're right, I'll give you that. They're they're a superpower. China isn't necessarily in that range, but it is an economic power. Like if we talk about why Jason Statham and The Rock are pretty big in China, they are at Lionsgate. Lionsgate is mostly owned by Chinese, right. by Chinese company. Um, how much of Hollywood, if we talk about Disney doing the Avengers, they had to work with the Chinese government to make sure that it, got, it made its way overseas and got into the government because there's only a certain amount of allotted foreign films that are allowed in China per year. which opened up the market for the Marvel films being billion dollars in a billion dollar club. Yeah. And so now you're like playing against the fact that resources, resource capability. What does China have? China has people. They have an actual economic impact to the global world if we say that we're not going to that china says they're not going to buy soybeans from us then they go to another country and buy soybeans right like soy sauce and tofu (laughs) yeah maybe you've got you've got the these are two of the things and this is where you go, okay, well, let's talk about America. Soy sauce and soybeans. Yeah, that's not going over in very well. Well, what other countries? Not too many others. Japan certainly is one. Yes, but it doesn't have the number of people. And that's why the issue of their declining population is an well, issue for the Japanese well, well, government. Well, well, China has the same kind of issue, but... It's the like the like Japan and China are both prime examples of why of, of like they're they're both of their declining populations are both show the glaring problems in 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 in, in a truly laissez faire like like t- in, a, in a more laissez faire kind of capitalist system versus a um a, a communist uh, socialist system 
in both in in both of those are 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 examples of what happens when you let the flaws of both of those systems just flourish because for from because Ch- China had the one child policy yes. and 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 you have an entire generation of people who either don't want to have kids or only one or or just fine only having one they don't see the need to have more than one and for and and for Japan Japan's case men and women have to work so goddamn much to afford to live anywhere in the goddamn country that they just don't have the time that they just don't have the time desire or like they just like they barely have time to go out after work and drink and relax a little bit they just go home I, I, I understand what you're saying and yeah. i would say that your assumption that your view view on what the symptoms are is that seeing the symptoms is correct they, they, um, they, they, i understand that they're, they're they're deeper they're deeper than that but it's like it's just i would i would like to argue a different idea Go because ahead. it affects us here in the u.s as well japan is heavily automated yes that's true it's true and so like you can go to a vending machine and get a meal like an actually decent meal or it's something not just drinks and whatever else and they have i forget what their capital of vending machines per person is but it's the highest out of every country in the globe makes you wonder how they make any money they make the money from the vending machine now so the vending machines how makes you wonder like how they like how the vending machines make their money I mean, <laughs> so I, because the idea is you now don't have to pay a human person to be there to man the cash register and that and that cuts back on the any loss you have by just having the oversaturation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now i would wait I, i'm gonna guess that you're hashtag yang gang mm, no i am not I am. I do fall somewhere between uh, Bernie, Yang, and Warren. Like I'm somewhere in the in the middle of that, and like we can go into why I'm I'm in the middle of that, and not. I do lean more to one candidate than the others, but why that is in a moment. But the other reason why this, why the factor of saying automation is the issue is we have to understand what China tries to do on the most part by uniforming as much as possible the number of people that you have. That is, in essence, a form of automation. And when you actually do that, it becomes harder and harder because you can get the same thing everywhere for you to make money um, if it's not something that everybody is going to get. Or when you do make something that everyone's going to get, you make a millionaire. Mm. Now, how does that affect us here at home in the U.S.? The argument that we fall into on a large basis is the fact that automation has taken away many of the manufacturing jobs that we have here. As, as a result, that's what causes the underlying issue for a lot of the distress and... Um, agitation because those autom- those factory jobs are no longer there right as a whole on the worldwide scale every country is actually in decline on the number of births that are occurring it's not it's not just japan it's not just china but it's more poignant in japan because they have a smaller number and so the having losing the same percentage is actually a bigger hit to them. And so it continues to cascade. Right. 
the cost of rearing a child is still a cost of rearing a child. And the, and, the, and, and, the, and the one thing I say to people is like, like uh, when whenever you decide to like do like something like get a mortgage buy, and buying a, and buying a house, uh, mm. buying like a lot of like, I try my to just dip into finance for a second. I try to not do anything or get any kind of like payment burden whatever or anything or that mm-hmm. is that doesn't have potential or certainly guaranteed or, or close to guaranteed tangible uh ways for that money to make more money off itself you know things like real estate and stocks and bonds and stuff like that a kid but... like, uh, things like a mortgage things like and especially a child Mm-hmm. You're, you, the, you're just sinking money into that, you know, and especially a kid. A kid has no perceived. I, I made a mistake. I love kids, but I'm 21. I I want to be a dad someday, but God, not now, because at the end of the day, it costs a a half a million dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, to raise a kid for over the course of 18 years, not accounting for inflation whatsoever. That would be partially true and the reason why i say that would be partially true is because what we assume that the child needs now versus what a child actually needs are two different things this is true so we could say that a child needs food clothing and shelter basic necessities the government requires that the child has education. Mm-hmm. Um, as someone who has been in, and not because of disciplinary issues, public school, private school, church school, and homeschooled, I can tell you that each one of them has their benefits. Each one of them has their drawbacks. Mm-hmm. The idea... Were you, army, were you an army brat? I was not an army brat. And that, because that's usually the next question people ask me. I, I it had a very interesting upbringing. That is why my responses are a little bit more nuanced than other people. Fair enough. Um, the idea is that when you go about realizing that you can homeschool your child you can teach them very well how to handle some things but they lose the social aspect they can doesn't mean they will they will especially if they have external activities like like rec league or choir or things like that if they're going about or if they're even if you decide to take your child out not just to a library but maybe to musical concerts. If you teach them to read the crowd instead of the artist, that teaches them social cues as to what people do when the light isn't on them. Mm. There are ways to approach understanding that are different than what our structured understanding is. The reason we have structured learning is because we realized that there were far too many people who did not know how to educate because they not only did not have the information themselves to know that leeches would not cure you, But the idea to understand that, how to convey that information. And most importantly, the maturity to accept that maybe what you've believed for all these years is wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. Or, and here's what I usually find the kicker, and it can be and or, how to convey that Truth is truth, but the the same truth doesn't always remain 
the mm. same truth. Because as variables change, what may be true doesn't mean that it always is. If I say that there is steam, if I change the variable of heat, it may be ice. Interesting. And so it may be true that it is water, but the form that it takes as water is whether it is a soft, solid, liquid, or gas. And it is under, when water is under standard temperature and pressure, STP, it is a liquid. But that standard pressure, temperature and pressure is based on what we consider standard. What would be standard on the moon would be something completely different. It is true, and this is why like we look for ice on Mars, that it, its standard there would be different. And so for our approaches, if you're teaching someone, you're teaching someone to read the variables and determine the outcome. Not just to accept that this is one truth and it will always be the truth, and this truth will never change, but under what conditions it is true. Under what conditions does, is it untrue? Because I could say that having a line of credit is a great thing to have. But there are conditions under which that is a total fallacy. And so understanding that allows you not to be hoodwinked by the idea that it's good or that it's bad, but to know what condition, under what conditions is it efficient for you to use. And, and so that changes also the authoritative mindset of many dictators in the fact that they're like, this is a truth, it's always true. No. Just because something is true does not mean that it is always true. Mm -hmm. One of the things when I, while I was going to college where, and having a conversation with a lady um, who was approaching her uh, retirement years. That's, so you're, just, you're being very kind right now. Yep. That's, that's fine. And we, we were having a discussion Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we had a itty bitty tiny little technical issue here. Uh, thing cut out, but luckily it quit right at the time when we were supposed to do a commercial break, anyhow. So, uh, thank you for listening thus far, and please enjoy your commercial break. And we appreciate you supporting High Media. And we are back from our a <laughs> abrupt buggy commercial break um so uh as you were saying target i apologize you were cut off unfortunately not a problem how i was mentioning the fact of having a conversation at a college with while i was at college with a woman who is approaching um retirement age and we were discussing yes and we were discussing the fact of how I approach things a little bit differently than other people. And she's like, you do come in quite authoritative. Like, she's like, in a good way, like, people willing to follow you, do Yes. Uh, and, but I said, like, there are, there are issues with different things of how I approach things. And she's like, well, yes, you have to come in, like, a assuming that you you know what's best and that that's the right thing to, and what's the right thing to do and i said no that's not the way i come in and she's like no like that's how i come here i was like that's the problem though that's the di that's the difference between you and me 
because I want to follow more in the lines of a true scientist. And a true scientist always questions himself because they always question whether the assumed information is correct. And so I never actually come in assuming that I'm right. I come in assuming that I can figure out what is right or what is best for that given situation. Because I can actually sit down and get the information from all the different areas and cross-reference it and then go, this is the decision I want, to I want to make. And I can say, like, these are the options. And make a decision from that point forward. But I never assume that I am 100% correct all the time. If scientists who make discoveries believed that, we would never have semiconductors, which means we would never have computers. They would assume that a ceramic never conducts electricity. But knowing that under certain conditions, it can changes your approach to the situation. And that is assuming that the information you have may not be 100% correct. But, that, but you also have to remember at the same time, people are rather prideful they they they, they don't they well, that, there's something in humans that just make it difficult for us to accept we're wrong or it's that, part of, when when it's part of the reason that why like people are able to like say like when a scientist says i can say this with beyond a reasonable doubt that when a scientist means by saying that is i'm a i am as sure as i can about, be i'm i'm as sure as this about this that i am sure that you that you're that when you walk outside you are not going to run into the de the, the, the to elvis presley you know it's it, when they say that actually what they mean is i am as sure as i can possibly be right but because i mean and, says you have to be a little humble you can't you like there could always be something that could prove you wrong because that's what science is yes but in understanding that and this is where like the rest of the information lays out is that generally they will do six standard deviations of what they're doing mm. and so this is something that most people don't realize is that as they're doing something and they're running tests they're running tests changing only one factor they have to have at least six standardized deviations to be like, this is reasonably the case, where they changed the factor in six different ways that this outcome still stays the same. Then they go through, keep everything the same, change a different factor. Then go back through, go again, and change a different factor. And so they do this at least six times to have six standardized deviations to approach a situation to see if it, how far it holds true and at what point does the data start skewing a bit. Mm -hmm. And then once you see the skew, if you start to see a skew, like if there's no effect, there's no effect. But right. if you start to see a skew, then you can go, all right, let's run this test further out to these to these changes of extremes to see if it actually has a reasonable difference in what's going on. And so when they come and say, hey, this is what is going on right now, this is what I assume is the answer, and this is what my belief is beyond a reason, beyond, as far as I know, beyond a reasonable doubt, it is 
that they take that information and then they publish it in a scientific journal, right. a reputable scientific journal. And there, there's cases made up for that as well because they publish it, but it's published so that their peers can review it. Right, but you know, the, the one thing that's always bothered me about scientific journals is, is that like the people who published it, like the people who did the research, they don't get a single cent. It only goes to the publishers. Um, yes, but that's part of the reason why, generally speaking, from an American standpoint, we try to run grants for our scientists. Because right. um, keeping, and... keeping money out of the process as much as possible is important. It's part of the reason why, like, whenever I see some, whenever I see a, a scientific study that says climate change is false, I and and it was sponsored by the American Petrol Institute. I'm just like, like but wait, what then, am I supposed to take from that? Here's the here's the trick. The trick is what publication was it published in? Mm. And that's that's why that is the key distinguishing factor, because there if you are asking for something that was published from UCLA or something that was published from NYU or something that was published from Cambridge, you need to find what magazine it goes into God. because they're Man, not this... will determine what is legit and what is mm -hmm. not. And this is how corporations get around it because they start their own magazine. Right. And, but, and, and so the magazine publications are where you got to look to see if they're legit or not. Yes. And so this is why when you start asking colleges, like, what scientific publications are you, do you publish to? Where you, those become the standardized. Those are actually ones because they will not admit the ones from corporations because the specifications of the study must meet a certain level of requirement and they don't meet those levels. Just like me saying six standardized deviations, like there are certain specifics that they have to meet in order for it to be considered worthy of notoriety in their publications for someone who may be a German physicist to go and like, let me try this out. And someone who may be in California and be a physicist and be like, let me test this out as well. And so now you're talking about where do the true scientists get their information from? And so that determines the legitimacy of the information that's provided, whether chocolate is good for you or whether chocolate is bad for you. Well, whose publication did it come from? These become some of the questions. If I start saying, okay, I like to go work out, I would like to go work out at the gym, but I want to get the best out of my workouts, do I go to someone who is a expert or do I go to a biologist? Because then when I'm starting to go to a biologist, they can tell me what actually happens to the body under certain conditions. They can tell me at what points things break and what, at what point things repair. They can tell me how long it takes for new blood vessels to be formed in certain areas, capillaries to be formed. It can, they can tell me about how much oxygen is actually carried by the blood and what rate you'd have to increase things by. Mm. So you start going, do I look at men's health and fitness or do I go look at a biological study? Um, from... <laughs> I was going to say Sweden, but like Germany, because most of the Swedes actually go down to Germany for their college education. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because in Germany, you can pay two hundred, you can pay two hundred dollars, and you're good. Mm -hmm. there's, there's college. 
and and this this is their understanding of this is what it is now. Well, I've, I mean, I've I've been to Germany and it's like I stayed with I stayed with a family was with a host family while I was there. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing I found was is there you there was really two there's really two like the dad the mom was a teacher and the dad was a doctor. Guess mm-hmm. who the primary breadwinner was? The mother exactly. as a teacher because yeah. her her pay is higher and it is actually secured by the government. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very aware of that because I do have. From... And I mean, I I'm washing the blood. I come from a family of educators. Mm-hmm. Myself, you know. So. I, I I wouldn't say that I come from a family of educators. I will say that I have educators in my family. Um. The, I can say from a different point of view, like their structure of society is different. Oh, most definitely. Like they, they don't keep food really at the house. Like especially for breakfast. Like they'll wake up at around seven o'clock in the morning, go to the bakery, get all the stuff, and then they'd come home and eat together as a family. And then they would, the kids would go off to school at eleven, and everybody would go to work at around ten, ten thirty, eleven as well. Yes, but if I say structure of society, like I have, haven't talked to him in a while, but I had a friend that was a carpenter, German carpenter. There, they do go to, through their apprenticeship program, but the last year, they have to go across the country using their carpentry skills to actually only provide themselves with food. Mm. And they can't accept the money, almost like we would say Hare Krishna's having their bowl and they can only have what they have in their bowl, that is what they're they're allowed to do for their apprenticeship program. Now, I don't know if things, things have changed, but that is from a construction point of view, which is a fundamentally different approach than most everybody else's. And so when I when I mention things, I mention them from a I said from a very nuanced position because we don't necessarily grasp the full concept of things. And this is why I think there is a lot of truth in the in the statement heavy is the head that wears the crown. Because the nuances have to be considered because the variables change. And so if we're talking Germany versus the U.S., we would never allow for that to happen because people would use and abuse the carpenters. Right. Especially, there's, 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 there's a culture. There's a there's a like there like cult, there, it's a cultural un, like like yeah. There's cultural issues there. There there is a completely different cultural underpinning. Right. Now here's here's where things get a little bit. We in America say we respect work, but we don't really respect work. We respect work that benefits us personally. We don't respect work ethic if it doesn't fall into our like psychological box as an individual. I disagree with that. From a from the work aspect, as someone who's worked eighty four hour weeks I mean, for I mean, for weeks I mean, on end, and I, 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 I would defer to you on this one because you work you have worked a tradi- like what would be considered the quintessential blue collar job yes and when i say 84 hour weeks i'm not joking i would go in for a shutdown at some places and i would work 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift 7 days a week for 3 weeks fly to another location and do it again now in expressing that, it is not the fact that we respect work that benefits us. Because work that benefits us 
can be done in 30 hours a week. Mm. The what we want is we want servitude. Mm. So someone who will work with all that they have until they drop dead to make sure that we have what we're what we're telling them to do. No questions asked. If I tell you to jump, you're not supposed to ask how high, you're just supposed to jump. And I can even though, even though asking even though asking the the concept of asking how high would would be is a is a, is a practical question in that yes. analogy. Yes, and I can say that from a point of view where there have been companies that I've worked for, even recently, where I said to them, look, you're telling me this. You're telling me to jump. And I'm going, all right, you're telling me to jump. How high do you want me to jump? And like, I'm not, I'm not asking for questions. I just want you to jump. And I'm going, I need to know how high because you're not telling me so how because it's like you can't do your job if you don't know what the fuck you want me to do. Yes, which that is the issue with understanding parameters. Right. Be because if the person who is doing the job doesn't understand the parameters, mm -hmm. then that becomes an issue for everyone else working underneath them. Right, 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 right. And so they're like, no, like I've got tons of people that can that can do exactly what I say for them to do without any question. This leads us back to the issue of China. It is effective. Our U.S. economy is proof that it is effective. Uh, um, Go for it. I'll pause real quick. Um, I Go apologize. Uh, your your audio quality is, be, is skipping a little bit. Is every on my end? Is everything okay on yours? Um, it's. Let me see. Um, Just double check your mic connectivity real quick. That's what I'm doing right now. It does. It sound like it's coming through now. Yeah. Uh, say something one more time. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. The. Let's stop this for. The idea that we we can do something because we have enough people is not an oversimplification, but it is assuming that that is all that we need is enough people to do it. Right. right. And I can say that concerning um, the idea that Walmart is a distribution company with a storefront. Amazon is a distribution company with an online front. Mm -hmm. Burger King is a distribution company with a restaurant front. Hell, McDonald's is actually the biggest. If you if you mm -hmm. count McDonald's in terms of McDonald's, toy distributors, yes, they're the biggest toy distributor in the world. Seven Eleven is a distribution uh, company with a um, convenience store front. This is what you start to realize is the way that they actually make money is by getting product to people. They are the quintessential middlemen. Mm -hmm. When you realize that, then we start going back to the understanding of China. The government becomes the middleman. Mm. Interesting. Because once they have uniformed everybody, they can actually distribute with regularity and with control. 
So it's as much about it's so it's very so that sounds like soft power to me. It is. It is very soft power. That is the reason why it actually is breaking companies in the US. Yeah. Because if you want to do business in China, what do you have to do? You have to go through conform. Chi- yes, but you have to go through the Chinese government, which is the distribution to the people. So like it's not saying that these are these are all bad traits. And that's the harder part of dealing with the issue. We could say that and it as a black guy this may sound really weird coming out of my mouth that Nazi Germany had some very great ideas. They I get where you're coming from in this. In, 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 I, I'm just going to preface with this. I yeah. get where you're coming from mm-hmm. in terms of this, but tre- but keep, but tread very carefully. carefully. Yes, tread and this, very carefully. And, and I am, and that's why that's why I wanted to to say the reason to say that there. Anything that may have good implementation of certain ideals i of certain designs for their public may in some cases be good the problem is that in assuming that you don't assume the nuances that can immediately turn it to a bad thing Exactly. And that's part of what we are dealing with here in the U.S. is because we have a system that can be a very good system. China has a system that can be a good system. But it is not the system that is generally the issue. It is the people and the implement- using the system. Mm-hmm. And the implementation. Well, this, it's, I mean, the same problem with, I mean, people say, like, the problem of everything is government. I'm like, well, the same problem with government is the same problem that people, that liberals will ha- like my like myself, will have with bigger, with big, mm-hmm. with, with, like, with big corporations. It's the fact that, that at the end of the day, a government in a business, in a big business, are the same, are essentially the kind of the same thing. It's just a lot of people working towards a single goal. It's just this, that single goal is different. For And on the government side, it's a lot of people work towards serving the public. They, that is their goal is to serve the public and the constituents. The, serv- the purpose I, of a corporation I, is to service its bottom line. I will but, disagree, I will disagree with what you're saying only because you're stating it in a way that's a fact. I'm not stating it. I'm, I'm no, 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 no. Certainly, on the government side, that's a lot more fluid. But a a, a, cor- a corporation's purpose is to make money, do it's providing services that that the that the market deems valuable. Yes, I will. I will agree with with that. My right. statement was more towards the government side. Right, right. But I mean, that's how it's in theory. It's in theory. In theory, yes, but in theory, no, and or in practicality, no as well. Even on the business side, and I would like to throw it a different way. Um, yes, I grew up very religious. You're just saying that it, that I did the idea of church. Or, or are you still religious? I like I do have my personal religious beliefs, yes, but I do not feel not salacious about it. Well, my f- first thought is that whatever rules that I abide by, that I believe that God or whatever somebody else may consider as God as entity uh, wants me to follow. They're the rules that apply to me because I claim to be following. 
They're not the rules of someone else who does not claim to follow. So I cannot impose my rules that I follow on somebody else because that is not their decision to follow. Interesting. And so they're personable to me. And if they're like, hey, I see you doing that over there. And it seems to work for you. Like, how? Then I can say, hey, I have these set of rules that I follow that make it work for me. If you if you want to do it the way that I'm doing it, you'd have to kind of follow these rules. If it, I don't if you if you want to try, that's all well and good up to you. Test and see if it works. If it doesn't, make your own decision. Exactly. Because it's not for me to tell you how to live your life or to expect you to live your life. It's my rules. Like, I follow them. That doesn't mean that you have to follow them. Um, it would almost be like saying <laughs> the dietary chart for every racial breakdown, it is, I forget what the amount of sodium is per per day that's allowed except for one african americans are supposed to have 1500 milligrams of sodium a day as their maximum everyone else's is higher than that now that is a rule that is personable to me but it is not necessarily purposeful to somebody else well i mean the dietary the, the like it's part of the reason why certain certain people of certain people depending on their ethnic background are mm -hmm. able to become vegan significantly easier than others like me you yeah. and i you and i would have a harder harder time because i'm got i'm north my family's from northeastern europe so it's like mm -hmm. Cutting so cutting out meat is is really hard for someone like that. <laughs> yes, but as a like, because I I happen to be an over lacto vegetarian, even as a black person in the South, that is a very hard thing to do as well because that is ingrained in the culture. And like, you don't even eat fish. No, I'm not a pescatarian. No, 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 no fish. Like none. Not, no. I mean, I don't blame you. I'm not a gigantic. No, 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 fish myself, no. To be honest. But, but what I'm saying is, like, this is a question that I get from those that are, and so those are personal rules to myself. But that doesn't mean that I won't say to somebody, "Hey, if you're gonna go out and get a burger, make sure, like, you might try Five Guys because, like, they do their burgers well done." Yeah, Five Guys, dude, Five Guys burgers are the shit, man. For real, it's like... <laughs> but they're well-done burgers, whereas exactly. most everybody else doesn't necessarily do their burgers well done. Right, so it's like when you eat the well-done burger, it's like you're, it's, it's, it's arguably healthier, even though it's all greasy because you're not, have, don't have that risk of... And so this is true, and that's me saying, hey, look, I may not partake in this, but because I realize that good food and good quality food is something that I like, I wish you good health. So right. if you're going to go about doing this here, like here's options that you can take that reduce your risk a little bit. If you want to go sit down and have a steak, make sure you go get a good, well done steak. Some people like there's medium rare. I get that. Like, that's your taste preference, but that doesn't mean that you don't want some risk. And me, me saying that, some people are like, isn't that kind of against what you are? No. No, just because, like, I, 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 just for the clarity, I myself am an atheist. I, mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't believed in God. I haven't, I, like, I didn't know that, like, I didn't, haven't believed in God since the age of eight. And, That's hard. And, and, I, and I only started identifying as an atheist at age 13 because I finally learned what the word I was 
for okay. what it was, you know. But I've st- uh, since I grew since I've been out of my own and started running a business, I've stopped being an anti theist. You know, okay. So I stopped. I, I, I'm not. I don't degradate religion. I think I criticize. I, I think I criti- I like. I the furthest I'll go really now is criticizing the fetishization of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in, in in our in government and stuff like that, where I'm just like it's there's a, needs to be a separation of church and state, and there just I it's there are times where I just do not see that. I'm and I will that. I will 100% agree with you on that. And I, from, I, I will say um I will say um tar, Target. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, mm-hmm. but I have had an had a blast with this. Okay, and you probably need to start wrapping things up a little bit. <laughs> right, 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 because cause I, I, that being That's said, I, I most certainly want to have you on again. It That's is, right. You, you're just you're a joy to just listen to just talk. Understood, and so, that's um, that's not a problem. Yeah, what so, I will um, what what I will what I will end with then, because that way I can tie up some thought, of the, yeah. yeah tie up some of the loose ends. So. Church is one of the ways in which you socially adapt people to being a certain way Mm -hmm. that you cause uniformity. Mm -hmm. Yes, Blizzard has an issue with being in China. They do have different religious beliefs. They do have different ways in which they go about doing stuff. I cannot force my opinion on the Chinese. I I cannot, I do not wish for them to force their opinion on me. Right. Now, Blizzard finds themselves in a pickle. They want, or Activision Blizzard finds themselves in a pickle because they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to have their cake and eat it too. Like all the different things that I've expressed all have impacts because they're nuances of the situation in various different degrees. How culture works, how government works, how people actually implement those cultures and governments. These are things that we're still dealing with now now and today. It doesn't mean that I'm right and they're wrong doesn't mean that they're right and I'm wrong. Right. And what it means is that the company has some very big issues that they now have to deal with. I can talk, I can talk about the human rights violations that China has, but then I also have to turn around and say, the United States has some human rights violations going on right now on the border. Yep, nobody's perfect. I mean, the, those camps, we, we don't have time to get into them, but yes. we, certain, we certainly can talk about it at a later date. No, that's fine. And all I'm saying is, for me to point the finger across it's the water, it's hypocritical. I have three fingers pointing back at myself, and the best thing that I can do first is deal with what I have at home. And if I can't support somebody else who's doing something else abroad that I don't agree with, then I lay down my reasoning and say, hey, I don't think that's the way I want to go, and I'm trying to do some things here at home to actually prevent the same issues, because I don't think that's right. But that's me, and this is my home. This is my space. But if that's what you decide to go and do over there, you are welcome to go and do it over there. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can't do it over here. Right. And have a, I know you got to get going and have a good one. Oh, no, no, no. I just wanted to know. uh, I I don't have, the last thing I want beforehand is I want us, you to be able to plug all your stuff for on the on YouTube and stuff and have all that. And I know you're gonna send it all to me as well, so I can put it in the description. But I want to have it in verbal format, and I would like to plug a couple of my things too for your streaming audience. That's fine. And as I said, unfortunately, while I've been on here, like I have not been able to stream because there has been a recording error from the 
I, from the time that I've kicked off. And I've been, I, I've been actually searching to figure out what may be going on because I did notice that the, the top thing changed after NVIDIA took over. Um, and that's so funny. that we can do, we, once you figure it out, we can do this again some other time. That's fine. Um, but yeah, anytime that you want to sit I'll down, let you know, and, man. I'll so you got so uh Instagram, Facebook page, YouTube, Twitch, just lay it all out just verbally and I'll also put it in the description down below for our lovely viewers. Easiest way is just look for Target the Tank. It is right it is the same on all of the those platforms. I do have a Patreon page that I haven't completely set up yet, but it is there. Um Target the Tank on YouTube, Target the Tank on Twitch, uh Target the Tank on Twitter. And I do actually have an Instagram, uh, um, but generally most of the time you'll find me on Twitch and occasionally on Twitter, and I'll be putting up more stuff on YouTube as time goes on and moves forward. Definitely, definitely. And for those of you who, who, who for those of you listening, I highly suggest going to go watch him. I played with this man in the dungeon where we were just, it was a veteran beating our heads against the wall over and over <laughs> against these bosses. I tell you, this man, along with a, lo a lovely little healer that we, that I know, yes. got us through. She, she did all that she could, and it was great. <laughs> hey, and, she, and she's awesome because she has cerebral palsy. She plays with one hand. Ah. Yeah, she's that good too, huh? Yes, yeah. she's that so, good. Yeah, she's fantastic. Um, but um, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the High Soapbox. Target, thank you so much for coming. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.